We are awaiting a redacted version of special counsel Robert Mueller's Russia investigation as Democrats continue to lash out over the attorney general's comments that the government spied on the Trump campaign. Former White House Press Secretary Ari Fleischer saying this in a tweet, protect Attorney General William Barr. Now that the shoe is on the other foot and Obama aides may be under scrutiny, it sounds like the Democrats want Barr to be fired. Protect William Barr. Sounds like some people fear what he may find. Let's bring in former Obama administration advisor David Tafuri and former deputy assistant attorney general John Yu. Uh, a little tongue in cheek there, I think, for Mr. Fleischer today. Um, but as we stand by, there are a lot of questions about what we may get in the report next week. Um, John, do you think the Democrats will be happy at all? I mean, if he gave them the whole 400 pages with no redactions, would they be happy? I mean, they said that's all it's going to take. I know these calls for Bill Barr to be fired or to resign. They, like, they make the Democrats look partisan. Let's wait and see what Barr does with the report, as you say. What if he ends up releasing 95 percent of the report and Bob Mueller comes out and says, yeah, the report pretty much still contains everything the American people need to know. Should Barr be fired then? I don't think so. He's only had the report a few weeks. I mean, what's the big rush? Let the man finish the job. He said it's going to be out next week. I can't believe people would think. Now, let me also say, Attorney General Barr doesn't need protection. I think he can very well take care of himself. Every time he peers at these are things, he seems to be the only adult in the room, mm -hmm. and he knows what he's doing. Well, I know, and David, you wrote a piece today, and you have some speculation about some trouble that he may be in still, the president, when this is over. Uh, under the headline, does Mueller support, report anticipate campaign finance crimes related to Trump's Russia contacts? You write in part, Trump and his campaign are not out of the woods for prosecution of campaign finance violations arising from contacts with Russia. What more do you think we may learn in the Mueller report? Well, in Attorney General Barr's summary, he talks about obstruction, and he says that uh, Mueller didn't come to a conclusion on obstruction, and he talks about conspiracy or collusion, and he says Mueller found no crimes. Barr does not discuss anything about campaign finance violations, including possible campaign finance violations related to the Russia contacts by the Trump campaign. I think that's significant. There has to be some information about those potential campaign finance violations in the Mueller report. So that's what one one of the things we need to see in the version of the Mueller report that we get. I also agree with John that there's no basis to say that Attorney General Barr should be fired or impeached at this point. However, Attorney General Barr's duty is to the American people and to the Constitution mm -hmm. as the highest legal officer in the land, not to the president. That means he can't be seen to be protecting the president. When we get the report, a, a question will be, does he give us enough of the report so we can understand what Mueller really concluded? Well, and this leads to an interesting problem because Senator Shaheen Democrat asked him, are you going to withhold any disparaging information on the president? And he said, no, I'm not about protecting him. That's not how this works. Uh, but, John, we know there's also this policy out there uh, in federal law enforcement that you don't lay out an entire case like Jim Comey did against Hillary Clinton and then don't give that person a chance to answer in a court of law because you don't actually charge them. So what do you think that means about what we will or won't get with regard to the president in the Mueller report from Barr? Well, first, I think the a bar already summarized that he found no evidence. This is interesting. He didn't say insufficient evidence to charge for collusion with Russia or conspiracy bribe violate federal law. He found no evidence at all. So I don't think you're going to need to be worried about this concern about spreading disparaging information about President Trump on that score. Uh, David's right. The area where we'll be most curious is what does the Mueller report say about obstruction? Uh, but it sounds like Mueller, if you look at the Barr letter, he lays out evidence on both sides. Mm -hmm. And so, actually, I don't think it's going to be a case where it's just going to be one-sided prosecutors saying, oh, this is all the things we have against Trump on this one side. It sounds like Mueller also lays out the facts favorable to Trump on the other side, and he's going to allow Barr, who already thought it wasn't criminal, and then the American people to, uh, and, Congress and Congress to yeah. make their own judgment. All know. right. Speaking of Congress, I want to play something from Senator John Kennedy uh, talking about Barr and what happens next. Here's what he says. When Bill Barr issued a summary, you would have thought, according to some of my Democratic friends, it was the second coming of the apocalypse. Oh, he issued a summary. What do you think would have happened if he hadn't issued a summary? And, and now they're saying he's in bad faith and he shouldn't take a look at how these investigations started. David, should he look back to the origins or not? Well, 
Let me first mention that Senator Kennedy is a little bit out of line there because the problem with Barr's report is summary is it's just four pages and he could have given us more information. For instance, Mueller actually had lots of conclusions in his report that didn't have grand jury information. They had nothing that was secretive. He could but have, every page, he could have so put all of clear, that in there. Just he, so people are clear, every page was marked that this contains classified information and cannot be released. I mean, he has to wade through that. That includes the summaries and everything else from what we're told. Right. But Mueller's team put top line conclusions for each section, and Barr could have given those, and he didn't. So there's a question there about why he did that, and I don't understand that. Now, of course, it's it's permissible to look into how this investigation started, but we already know most of the facts of how it started. It started because one of Trump, Trump campaign's advisors, Papadopoulos, talked to an ambassador of Australia in the UK and told him he knew about the Russians having dirt on Hillary before anyone else knew. That was a basis for the FBI to be concerned. And then they found other evidence that was similarly concerning. That's how the investigation began. Another Republican senator, Senator Rubio, has said he understands how this started and he thinks it was appropriate for the FBI to look into this. Yeah, there are a number of lawmakers uh, who have said that they've gotten conflicting and different, uh, you know, conversations and different explanations um, from the various agencies. So they still have questions. And the American people, they, they, they deserve to see all of it. So hopefully we'll get all of that sooner rather than later. Hope David so. and John, thank you both.